One of the most dangerous attributes in the human race is the concept of groupthink. And stay tuned and I'll tell you why it not only is dangerous, but why it doesn't serve you on your path to excellence. Human beings are not just another animal that roams this planet. And this is because of the one attribute that human beings do possess that the smartest animal does not, and that's the ability to think. However, many times in the process of our thinking, we do revert to the animal kingdom. Many animal species tend to move and operate in packs, and many times, so do humans. There are many, many times when humans will align their thoughts with the group and not with themselves. The entire Third Reich was built on this concept, and over 8 million people were exterminated because of it. And how did this begin? A little Napoleon complex failed artist began spouting that the Jews were responsible for the downfall of Germany's economy in the 1930s. This of course was ridiculous. Germany had to pay reparations for the cost of World War I, which they lost. That would have been the logical deduction of why Germany's economy was failing so badly. But the angry little yard gnome, who had no significance in the world, continued to spout this nonsense in the beer halls in Munich. And then a few other malcontents in Germany began to spout the same. This should have been stopped with basic common sense and logic, but it wasn't. Pretty soon, Hitler had hordes of people repeating his mantra. And over time, enough people aligned with his cause that it became the Third Reich. And the rest of Germany, they simply looked the other way and pretended it wasn't happening. That period of history is what can happen on an extreme level when humans engage in groupthink. And this isn't the only time this has happened in human history. It has happened repeatedly. Noted once again by the seven-decade rule of tyranny known as communism of the Soviet Union. As I've stated in other videos, most people are not sheepdogs willing to fight the wolves. Most people wander idly with the flock drifting in their thoughts wherever the masses lead them. If you look at the Ash Conformity Experiment, it places a group of college students in a classroom. All but one are actors in the experiment. The actor dubbed the professor draws a short line and a long line. Then he asks the class which line is longer. The actors state that the short line is longer. Then they sit back and watch the reaction of the subject. More often than not, the subject will also state that indeed the short line is longer, even though it's right in front of his very eyes. And it's important to note there are no repercussions for stating truth, except for feeling different from the crowd. The concept of groupthink is our insulation from feeling like a nonconformist, because nonconformists are generally ridiculed and ostracized by the majority. It doesn't matter what field you go into, innovators are generally met with great opposition. Because most people are not sheepdogs in the kennel. They are comfortable in their routine with idly wandering with the flock. Obviously, look how much we spend on our vehicles. People will pay for a car that is way out of their price range simply for social acknowledgement from their neighbors and co-workers. It is a classic example of groupthink. So you have the catastrophic dangers of groupthink like the rise of the Third Reich or the fall of Russia to communism. But aligning your thoughts with the wandering herd, that can also be dangerous for you. Let's take that car example again. If you are spending an excessive amount of money that you really can't afford in order to have a vehicle that others approve of, you are hurting yourself financially. You are hurting your future. That extra three to four hundred dollars you're paying for your high-priced vehicle, plus the higher-priced insurance premiums, that could probably be an extra half million to a million dollars in your account if you invested it wisely over 30 years. But you're not going to have that because you're following the mentality of everyone else. And it's not just the car, it's the house you buy, the clothes you wear, and everything that you purchase in order to try to keep up with the Joneses. Many have fallen into the groupthink of the hyper-consumer because everyone else is doing it. And we really haven't seen the results of this yet, as Generation X is probably going to be the first generation that's unable to subsidize their retirement. And it's going to be a disaster that has severe repercussions on this economy. But groupthink isn't just related to our spending habits. Many people will choose their careers and continue in careers that they despise based on what others around them are doing. How many college students will major in business because that's what they think they're supposed to do? Now, I have known a few who are passionate about business and very good at it. 
people who love the art of the deal. But I also know many who majored in business, finance, and marketing solely for the reason of obtaining that house in the suburbs and the homeowners associations like everybody else. Because their strategies were dictated by groupthink, which told them that to be a successful human being, you had to do this. And that miscalculation is the origin for the midlife crisis 20 years later. Or how many will get married and have children because society tells them that's what they're supposed to do by the time they're 30. I have never been married nor have children. Do you know how many times I've been lectured by other supposed sages who told me I'm not living my life in the correct fashion? Even though modern marriage has turned into a battleground with an over 50% divorce rate, followed by a 90% misery rate in self-surveys. Very few people are happily married these days. But when the masses see an outlier named Charles Hurst, they instantly become defensive. Again, nobody likes the nonconformist. Because the nonconformist cuts through the brush creating his own trail. And it is a stinking reminder to the masses that they didn't even bother to swing the machete. Your freedom will reflect their imprisonment. And they know it. Now I'm not saying there aren't times for collaboration. For instance, you may have a team putting together a new software program. In these type of situations, two heads are better than one. But groupthink is a dangerous concept when you're laying the groundwork for the course of your life. If most people were to look at their peer group, they will find that most of their colleagues aren't successful or significant in their life. They are simply following the day-to-day -day routine of what society tells them they should do. And if you follow this groupthink mantra, you will remain very average and your peer group will comfort you in that regard. They will alter your thinking into believing that the world is against you and the game is rigged. And it is. The world is against you and always has been since the day you were born. But the people who align themselves with defeatism, they will have very average lives. Now they may have decent lives, nice homes, an okay car, and the bills paid, but they won't be significant in the world. They will be facing the gravestones like many of my patients in my early days working the nursing homes and physical therapy and feel that there was something more that they were missing in life. And that is a terrible notion to face when you are finally out of time. The way to protect yourself from falling into the trap of groupthink is to pretend like that you're the only person on earth, almost in a narcissistic way. You follow Ayn Rand's virtue of complete selfishness, because it is your life and you only have one as far as we know. You pick a career based on what you want to do, not what others dictate you should do. Now I'm not saying you have to pick a trade that will land you in poverty, you have to be smart in this endeavor. But you don't base your life fitting into a mold just because society acknowledges it. If you want to live in a remote cabin with an outhouse, then do it. If you want to change careers at 45 years old, don't listen to everyone around you telling you you shouldn't. And if you don't want to be married with white picket fences, then that's your choice as well. I'm not telling you to walk my trail, I'm telling you to walk your own. Simply put, learn to think solely for yourself. For those who do think for themselves will find that the path they choose will be the one that leads to the greatness that awaits them. I'm Charles Hurst, author of Reinvention of Self, How to Change Your Life and Being Forever. That and other works are found in the links and descriptions below. I don't ask for donations. If you buy one of my books for a couple bucks, then you'll get something of great value in return. For that is the capitalistic way. If you're ready to turn into an alpha warrior, hit that subscribe, tap the like, and smash the bell, and I will see you at the next sunrise.